I started to look for places about uh, a year ago. In the beginning, not so serious. I, uh, when I was in Barcelona last year, I looked more in Spain. Uh, mostly on the website uh, called Idealista, which is a Spanish website. But uh, there's an Italian version as well. So for Spain, you would look on the .es side and .it is for Italy. And, um, but in Spain, I didn't find what I was looking for. And I wanted to be in the mountains. There's places in the Pyrenees which, which are really nice, but I wanted to be in the Alps because, I don't know, I just like something about the Italian culture. And it's closer to the Netherlands, it's closer to just a lot of things, so Italy made more sense. And soon I found out that I just needed to be here to, to actually see the places, you know. Um, many of those adverts, especially if they're put up by private owners, the photos are very bad. So it's hard to imagine how those places really are. Um, so that's actually why I bought the, the camper, because uh, I thought if I'd have a camper I could just uh, travel easily uh, and just spend uh, spend some time in those places, you know. And if it's high in the mountains, I, I, I brought the bike as well. So I'd cycle up to the house, I could see it. Uh, camp there sometimes, I've camped here too, uh, just to get a feel of the place. So uh, yeah, first trip was in um, what was it like late April, beginning of May this year. Uh, for for about four weeks, I've traveled around the Alps looking at places. Started in the Dolomites. Uh, there were some very beautiful old cabins. There were wooden cabins high in the mountains, from 1,200 to 1,500 meters altitude. And uh, I got in touch with a, one of the owners, which is a really nice guy. He gave me a lot of information, which was really helpful. And I visited the place, which was in the region of, I think it was called Auronzo. Yeah, a bit east from the Dolomites, but very close. And yeah, there were beautiful cabins. There were, there were barns, though. People would never live there. There were storage places for... for hay, you know, food for the cows and the goats. And there would be little farms there too, it was really beautiful. But the difficulty there was, first the altitude was 1500 meters, so there was there was still a meter of snow in the beginning of May. So that's what I thought, like, hmm, that's difficult. Um, and like the building regulations there were very limited because I would, if I had to restore one of those places, uh, sort of from the ground up or like I mean there's a lot of restorations to do because the wind just blows through those barns um, first of all you have to get a permission by the municipality but also by the region and I think it was called Sovrintendenza yeah and the, the geometra who, who was there too he said like yeah it's very difficult if you want larger windows on the view side you know it's gonna be difficult. You have to be close them off with doors, maybe. Uh, it's difficult to get permission. It's also difficult to build there because the roads are super steep, and that's that's the fact for a lot of places. You know, with these amazing views, they're they're hard to reach. So um, yeah, viewed more properties there. I mean, the landscape there is beautiful. The Dolomites, those super steep mountains. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, prices of this cabin was 45,000. And that's kind of, yeah, the prices of cabins, which needs to be restored completely. Um, so, yeah, looked at other properties. Another one which I liked a lot was, there were two cabins. One was sort of a, a very small cabin built in between four or three very big trees and then there was a slightly larger house next to it. Uh, it was a lot of work too. That one was more on the grid. It was just above a little village and you could hear the bells of the church and but you, it would be like just on top of the village, like the highest house just outside of it. And the views were beautiful. Um, it was easy accessible as well. So, 
the problem with that one was it was uh, registered as a storage space so for for farmer to store uh, uh, hay for example or equipment you know so um, you could renovate it and put a bed and a simple kitchen there but you're not allowed to live full time there so it was kind of complicated and the real estate agent was saying like oh yeah yeah don't do this so didn't do that price of that one was 80,000 um, yeah it was a beautiful one I, I, I kind of liked it so then I went looking further I went to the lakes Como and uh, Maggiore as well and I mean that area is just gorgeous the lakes are so beautiful um, different prices though it's, it's a bit more expensive there but I thought if I if I buy something there is because it's so touristic it's also easy to to Airbnb it but it becomes a different thing you know I was looking for something to uh, to live off the grid a more adventurous place and if if you want something that's suitable for Airbnb it's more like a holiday house so it's it's a different thing um, but I <laughs> I found some amazing places there I was I was almost going to buy one place uh, on top of the hill also the last house on the hill with an amazing view it was so good and very quiet now you could see very far over Lake Como and on one side and not on the other side you could look in the Sondrio Valley uh, it was so gorgeous and uh, there were sheep there so you'd hear the, the sheep bells and there were horses and uh, other animals uh, and this place was a ruin so it really needed to build, be built up from the ground uh, in between two very large trees at 1100 meter so I was sold you know uh, um, I had a meeting with the, the real estate agent few meetings actually and with the geometra as well and we discussed the the renovation projects you know and they were saying like oh yeah it's cheaper to to rent a helicopter for the building materials and uh, I was starting to ask quotes from or like sort of ballpark figures from for renovating the entire place uh, talk with an architect spoke with some some builders and they gave me a uh, figure but I thought I talked to more people and more and more I was realizing that this was going to be a project that would go sky high in terms of budget and spendings because everyone there's so many factors that are that are hard to predict when you're so high in the mountains it's hard to get the building materials there and you know a lot of difficult things um, so in the end I decided not to do it because it, 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 that, that was a different budget you know so that place was for sale for 70,000 euros and um, it was a ruin so you need to build a house there from scratch so that go, could go easily into 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 uh, a lot of money to invest in so it, I needed to get a, another loan and I decided like I don't want to get a loan I want to buy something you know just cash and renovate it myself um, because uh, building a house from scratch by yourself is just out of the question in Italy it's just not allowed you need to get building permits it needs to be done by certified builders um, it needs to be done you can't do it yourself it's it's that simple so then I thought like okay the dream is over uh, went back to Amsterdam and then started looking into different regions and that's where I came here uh, more on the on the west side closer to France I find out that the prices are a lot cheaper um, and it has to do that there's just less tourism here so and then I found places which were just 10,000 ruins for 5,000 uh, 15,000 20,000 um, and I thought like okay I could I could I could pay that and then uh, if I could do the renovations myself 
because I learned if the structure is good and the roof is kind of good you can do internal works you're allowed to do it yourself and that way you can save money um, but it, I mean it wasn't really about saving money it's fine to invest in a in a house you know because it's real estate it will you will add value to it but I didn't want to step into a renovation project with uh, building companies and just a lot of different parties and permits in a in a country where I don't speak the language I thought it's just gonna be too stressful and complicated um, I want to have a place where I can just work myself spend time it, it needed to be already successful um, from day one when I purchased it you know um, it's about the journey of, of cre creating a place yourself it's about learning all the crafts because I'm not a builder I have, I have a few skills but not much I just have to find everything out and, but that's the exciting part of it uh, for me so um, that kind of narrowed it down what I was looking for uh, I wanted to have sort of it needed to be accessible by car um, it needed to have a good view it needed to be somewhat remote so it would be a place in nature so not close to a village uh, so it made it easier to to look for places and then I came here I'm, I met with the real estate agent first I asked her about if some properties in the neighborhood I hadn't even seen the advert of this one and she was saying like oh maybe you look for this okay maybe this is something for you and then I, and it was a bit higher the price it was listed for 29,000 uh, which was a bit above my budget but when I came here, I, I biked up here. It took one and a half hour. And it was just an amazing. I just the view here, everything was overgrown. I just liked I just liked the situation of the two cabins. The the flat space here, which is a garden, and then this sort of which is sort of a podium in an arena, you know, and then the surrounding mountains. Which you can't see at the moment. Maybe the clouds clear in a bit. Um, I was sold so I've been here a few times and um, then I made a bid I bid 19,000 price was 29 and then the owner and then he came back with 20 free I believe yeah and then if you do 21,000 he's probably gonna go with it so I offered that and it was a deal it was done pretty quickly So with, um, with building permits, um, how it works is you need to get in touch with a geometer, which is a surveyor and an architect. Um, you have the difference between a geometer and an architect is that the geometer, uh, I believe, is only doing the more simple works, like smaller buildings and normal houses, not like skyscrapers, for example, and more special designs higher bigger buildings more that's that's what an architect does uh, so the geometra is the is the person you need and he will do he will ask for the building permits he will do all the communication between the the municipality um, and for this one because i'm not changing the structure i don't have to ask for a building permit but i do need to fill in papers to communicate that the works on the building on the inside that's what has to be done and it has to be done via a geometra um, <coughs> but I'm, I'm keeping the structure as it is it is uh, the roof the roof needs a lot of work but it's funny enough it doesn't count for changing the structure if you just change the rafters and you insulate it put new rafters on insulation and then put the, the stones back which is a it's a pretty big job but it's it's allowed to do it without uh, a building permit 
um, you cannot change doors, you cannot change uh, windows, uh, because then you need a building permit, and then there's a whole new set of rules you get into. So I'm keeping it fairly straightforward. It's still a, a huge amount of work, um, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm enjoying it so much to be here. Just working here, just spending time here, that is the goal. I mean, getting the houses finished to a, to a livable house, you know, that's, that's a goal in itself. But the goal is just spending time here and, and working here and being here, enjoy the, the mountain life. And another goal is to learn about uh, renovating such a place, you know. Um, so it's going to be a lot of YouTubing, reading blogs, talking with people trying it out, doing it wrong, read more about it and do it right. It's, just so t it's about teaching yourself and developing yourself about all these building skills and, and creating a living here in the mountains. That's what I want to, that's what I'm up for.